Hi everybody, I've just come from the back of making another live. Um, I was singing Wondrous Place by Billy Fury. If you want to check out Fabian Deacon's vocals for that latest live, you can. It's not great, I don't look great on it, but you know, I did what I could under the circumstances of not rehearsing properly. So, <laughs> so, so, so I did that also. I wanted to create Saturn Chronicles 13 because I felt like a bit of a brag today. So I got up and without painkillers or anything, I basically, I took the bins out today. And yeah, you could, if you could tell, you could look at my body from the look of my body that I was struggling to do it. Um, it was a bit of a walk because I had been tortured beforehand in my lumbar region. So today I was finding it like a bit difficult. Well, a lot more difficult than usual because, you know, it's me. But when I came back, I actually felt really proud of myself. And this was coming off the back of me, like, clearing up my room yesterday and clearing up my environment, even though, like, I could barely walk, like, I was doing everything with my feet. I, I could barely walk and I was doing everything with my feet. Um... You know, so I was really proud of myself for, for everything that I've done. Um, feeling good about life, feeling good about myself, despite all the hardship. And I heard some perps outside like earlier this morning saying, oh, I can't believe we were scared of her. Uh, she was struggling. Like, I can't believe her. I'm thinking. If you even have to say that, like if perps even have to weaponize their conversation like that from outside that means they're terrified it's like because <laughs> it's like what the perps tend to do is that if you tend to make an assertive claim like this is you know i'm an honest person or you're scared or this that and the third they'll turn around and say no you're not well it's the same tactics that a 14 year old would employ to try to mess with your head only it's not going to work with me this time because there's no way in hell that these people would have cut me down physically or done any of the things that they'd done if they weren't scared. Everything that the tar everything that the perps do to targeted individuals, whether it be electronic torture or institutionalized gaslighting or narcissistic abuse, they do because they're scared. Because they're scared of your power, because they're scared of what you're able to do. Now, between me screaming like a banshee when their torture worked a little bit too well because that happened back in february as well between me screaming like a banshee when their electronic torture of my hips my back and my pelvis worked a little bit too well and me still making everybody around me look like the incompetent narcissistic fools they are and me not responding to my neighbours when they continuously try to bait me into making threats or bait me into getting upset by talking about me at the top of their fucking lungs. Or And between me, you know, between the physical torture not having the effect that it was supposed to have because, you know, that that's why I'm saying these perps are stupid. If you're going to electronically torture somebody to the point where all they can think about is the pain, how am I going to think about threatening or taunting anybody else. So between all of that. Of course the perps are scared. Because we, you know they're thinking. Oh this person is a physically strong. Because I've always been relatively physically strong. Even when I pretended not to be. To try to get out of shit. I've always been relatively strong physically. Right. So they're thinking. If they cut down my physical strength. Then it impedes what I'm able to do. And it impairs my power but it doesn't what it actually does is allow me to come back to come back to my foundations and say okay where are my weak spots and what i realize is that my weak spots were always my psychological processes now well that and relationships like my psychological processes were always my weak spot so me being laid out like this it's actually allowed me to develop the tools necessary to kind of come into my own head and sort of understand how things work. I've been doing that for years and I did that for years 
waiting for a, a time where everything would just click but it didn't really happen like that what happened was that I gradually worked on my psychological processes and over time I became more and more resilient so that when the physical pain did come around yeah it fucking sucked but then I managed to find a way to recover that didn't necessarily involve physical therapy I found that because I was working on my psyche and my psyche was like my vulnerable point once I was strengthening my vulnerability it was very easy from there to kind of push through the physical pain and to push through the physical stuff even when they're torturing me and laying me on my back and shit and that's the point the point of knowing what the worst case scenario is uh, you know the point of knowing that gang stalkers cause you pain that gang stalkers immobilize you institutionalize you kill you make you homeless but the point of knowing all of this is not to necessarily avoid it and it's not to move towards it either the purpose of knowing the worst case scenario and accepting the worst case scenario is so that you can develop the emotional resilience to it to push through and to live your life in spite of what they do to you and if you can do that you can fight for your rights this is the thing i am literally i'm literally walking like a 90 year old at the moment and the perps have never been so fucking scared of me i swear to god like it, they have never been more scared i remember there was you know <sighs> seriously like I, I i remember um it's not even i remember it happened yesterday i had this pain on my frontal lobe and i was turning around saying oh yeah go ahead on my fire on my frontal lobe because that worked so well for you last time didn't it and then came like a smart comment from next door saying oh you know keep talking and we're gonna call the police and at that moment i realized i'm not scared of that shit i'm sorry like and you can see you can hear it in my voice and you can see it in my face i just don't give a fuck i'm sorry because what's what's a scream or you know and what's a threat in comparison to electronic torture institutionalized gaslighting narcissistic abuse what what is what is like a threat from next door in comparison to that i don't give a fuck if anybody calls shit on me i don't give a fuck i'm sorry like you know and that's for next door torturing me i don't know whether they're doing it or not like i can't say in my heart of hearts that they're the ones doing it i used to say um my next door neighbor was doing it in london because she literally started bragging about it but what i've actually realized is is that just because certain people exploit my physical pain in order to try to incite me into violence or making threats it doesn't necessarily mean they're the ones using it so i don't know for sure whether my next door neighbors are using the electronic weapons in all likelihood they might not be and even if they were they wouldn't be the only ones so i don't know if it's them but what i do know for sure is that it's being exploited in order to try and get a rise out of me so they can turn around and say oh i'm harassing them because it's happened before so basically i'm in pain somebody will try to narcissistically abuse me by talking about me every single day of every single hour to get a reaction at the top of their lungs and then what i'm supposed to do from there is i'm supposed to taunt them back or say something back or make a threat back they can call the police get the police down it it's usual shit they keep employing the same tactics over and over they do not adapt they don't adapt at all meanwhile you as a ti you're adapting all the time because you're you're it's just you one and you have to be resourceful if you're going to be laid out in pain or you're going to have your skin burned or you're going to have all these things happening to you if your communications are going to be hacked if your internet is going to be hacked if you're going to be diagnosed with a mental illness disorder to the point where it can impair your ability to testify in court you've got to be resourceful in that situation but that's the situation they don't have to be in because they're not the ones being tortured they're not being tortured by us so they, they ain't got to think of that shit but that's exactly what impairs them because they don't have to prepare for certain things 
And sometimes when you don't have to prepare for certain things, it leaves you weak. So for me, you can be in pain and it sucks. You can be emotionally tortured, traumatised and it sucks. You can have all of these things happening to you and it sucks. But if you have the emotional resilience to deal with it, it will become a situation where even if you're dead, they can't stop you. Even if you're immobilised, they can't stop you. Even if you're institutionalised, they can't stop you. Even if you're isolated, they can't stop you. Once you have that emotional resilience there, there's very little that can stop you and they know that. Why do you think they keep attacking your central nervous system? Because that's where you carry all your intelligence. That's how you tell your body what to do. It's the connection between the golden crown and the silver thread or the silver cord. That's why they keep attacking that shit. To keep you from being dis to keep you from being properly connected with your own body. But when you work on your psyche and you work on your emotional capacity to deal with the torture, suddenly you realize you can push through the pain. You can do what you need to do in order to make sure your voice is heard and your rights are heard and you are able to get on with your life. So yeah, they're scared of me. They're very, very afraid of me. Why wouldn't they be? I've demonstrated that I'm more capable, that I'm stronger, more intelligent, and more capable with half a back and half my brain than any of these people are. So why wouldn't they be scared? Why wouldn't they be scared? And I want you guys to notice if there's any interruptions or anything going on with my with my uh videos or with my you know if if there is any direction that is being taken away from the subject matters that I'm talking about I want you guys to pay close attention if I start talking about emotional resilience and somebody else starts talking about the physical implications watch out for little things like that because they're trying to detract you away from what I'm saying okay this is another thing we have to consider another thing we have to consider these people have spent so long keeping us afraid of the worst case scenarios that we didn't stop to think about how much options that leaves us with. For example, if I'm diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia on the count of me talking about the electronic torture that I'm subjected to, that means it's inadmissible in court. It could mean that I'm in it's inadmissible in court. If they if I keep talking about this and they say that I can't look after myself as a result of what I'm saying, then yeah, it could be mental incompetence and it could be inadmissible in court. At the same time, it means that I can say what I want. Especially if I have evidence backing it up. It means I can say what I want. If I'm not under pressure to prove anything that I'm saying in court. I want to be, I want, I want to make this clear. This is not about lying. This is not about lying and this is not about deceiving people. But understand, if you get certain things wrong, the responsibility is not on you. It is on the people that are looking after you. Really think about it, okay? If you are making claims about Havana syndrome and electronic torture and those claims are landing you in a mental health institution, right? And once you get in that mental health institution, your hygiene slips, your your personal care slips, your mind goes, you, you find yourself unable to talk. If all these things happen, whilst you're in somebody else's care, that's the tip-off, okay? That's the tip-off. Nobody wants to go through that type of shit. Nobody wants to go through the type of shit where they're trapped and they're being trafficked and they, there's no way out. But think about it this way. If they put you in that position and, and your healthcare is sliding and all of this is sliding, that doesn't actually prove that you can't look after yourself. It actually proves that the people who are taking care of you can't take care of you. <laughs> so whilst institutionalization can be used as a torture tool it can also be used as evidence in and of itself if i'm so 
incapable of looking after myself and if all of these you know allegations that i'm making about havana syndrome electronic torture institutionalized gaslighting are false then why would you put me in the care of people who don't know how to take care of me to the point where i'm worse for wear than i was when you picked me up that's proof in and of itself that's proof in and of itself you're exposing they're exposing themselves with every single thing that they do the reason why the public don't pay attention is because again they don't care so they're not going to look it up they're not going to research it they're not going to do they're not going to do what they're supposed to do because they don't care right so but the thing is you've got to judge things by results if i'm looking after you my thing is this if you're making claims that you're being electronically tortured and your back is fucked up and i'm taking you in as a mental health facility you know what's going to happen under my watch i'm going to make sure your hygiene is on point i'm going to make sure your laundry is done everything is done i'm going to make sure everything's on point i'm going to make sure that you physically your health is taken care of because i'm not about to have anybody out here incriminating me for jack shit i'm i'm gonna make sure you're taken care of but if somebody takes you in but for telling the truth only to turn around and want to torture you again that means they're guilty you've got to rethink you've got to rethink everything everything they do is evidence everything they do is evidence the thing the thing that you kind of realize as a target individual right is that pain is not the only thing that they use as a weapon incompetence is something that they that they use as a weapon as well cluelessness they pretend to be clueless in order to get away with shit whilst at the same time using their power and abusing their power to cover up the truth so they're trying to have the best of both worlds here where it puts you as a ti it puts you in the driving seat if you learn how to play your cards right, it puts you in the driving seat because now they're under pressure to maintain a very difficult balancing act between abusing their targets deliberately and taking care of their, their taking care of the same targets that they're supposed to be torturing. So they're forced to work walk a delicate line in order to keep their shit secret. They're forced to walk a delicate line in order to keep their shit secret. So my guy, don't come to me and, and be and be like, oh, you know, and think that if you call the police on me or get me institutionalized, it's going to mean jack shit. It ain't going to mean nothing. Everything that happens to me is evidence. It's all evidence. It's all evidence. Even if the courts don't acknowledge it, even if the public don't acknowledge it, the evidence is there. It's right there. So I ain't got to worry about shit. What am I worrying about it for? So what they thought was that because this big black woman, you know, looks like she can, looks ferocious, looks like she can tear somebody's head open. If you cut her down physically, then you've got her. And that's what, you know, that's what these electronic torturers were thinking. Cut her down. She's been doing yoga. She's been doing um, katita. Cut her down. Cut her down and watch what happens. But what's actually happened is that they've ended up humiliating themselves and I've become even more powerful now as a frail bastard than I ever was when I had health and strength. That's how you get them. That's how you make this shit. That's how you create an inescapable hell for your perps. Create an inescapable hell for them. Just like they do that to you physically. Do that to them emotionally. Do it to them emotionally. Don't give them a place to fucking hide. Make sure they know that even if they kill you, even if they institutionalize you, even if they immobilize you, even if they render you homeless, all these worst case scenarios that they try to get us afraid of. If you have the emotional resilience to push through those things in order to get what you want they have no escape there is nowhere to run 
that is how you annihilate them you don't you you push through you do not give them a place to hide because they're never going to open up about these crimes like with the havana syndrome stuff they've been testing it on marginalized communities the most and yet the only time the bill was passed was when they needed to make it look like other countries were doing it like this bill from the senate for example the only time when they even paid attention was when they could put forth this narrative that china you know that china was the villain or, or you know some shit like that that china or russia were the villains that's the only time when they were willing to to kind of make that bill was when privileged people got hurt so i i don't hold a lot of hope for the government investigating itself they've been drawing that shit out for decades you can't draw this shit out you can't you can't allow them to draw this shit out you have to you have to make it inescapable for them psychologically you have to make it inescapable for them you have to make it so they can't run or they can't hide from time that's how you have to make it and time is a way stronger opponent than anything else so yeah i came online to brag i'm very proud of myself you know it's a beautiful day outside but i'm not going out there it's too crowded man fucking hell it's too crowded and on top of that oh if i'm struggling to take the bins out there's no way i'm about to go out and get anything to eat today and i really wanted to go out and get a salad but man being tortured like i was you know i've been tortured throughout the entire time that i've been recovering and it's like two weeks wednesday it wasn't last wednesday forgive me it was two weeks wednesday that all that shit went down and since then i haven't been recovering as well as i'm supposed to because the torture has been happening throughout the recovery this is exactly why emotional resilience is important so i know it's not age age doesn't do shit like this i'm sorry I've had age-related back injuries before and they never resulted in this much fucking pain. There's no way in hell, so. And there have already been four other cases, apparently. Well, not four other cases, but apparently four cases, which means three apart from mine that have been going through this. There was another TI online that I personally knew of that was going through this shit as well. So it's not even just me and it's not age-related either. so yeah i know what age-related back pain feels like this ain't it chief this ain't it so you know and it, it you know it took me almost two weeks just to take the bins out the fuck <laughs> nah not me not me no way in hell that's torture that's the fucking torture but anyway i have to go I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining me for Saturn Chronicles 13. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.